Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and for my photography buying guide available at sdpcommunity.com, now I'm going to give you my full review of the Canon 70D, Canon's latest DSLR camera. Now, I've published three various sized reviews of the 70D already, um, one just a brief overview and then a full video review, a review of its video capabilities, and then a review of it as a wildlife and sports camera versus the 70 and the 5D Mark III. So if you're into one of those specific genres, either video, wildlife, or sports, go check out those videos. Now, I will recap those findings in this video and I'm going to add portraits and landscapes and casual photography and its Wi-Fi capabilities and, and just about everything else there is to know about the camera. Now, I'm not the first reviewer out there, but I think I put more time into it than anybody else. Uh, if somebody publishes a review within a couple of days of the camera being released, you know, they haven't spent much time with it, but I've been living with this camera. I've been using it commercially as a studio photographer. I've been using it casually as my day-to-day -day camera with my kids and family and dog. And I've been doing tons and tons of videography with it. So I feel like I have a pretty good sense of how it actually works. So let's get started. First, I'll go over how the 70D fits into the overall Canon lineup. And it, it basically it fits in at right now as the top end of their compact cameras. So at the bottom end of the compact cameras, you have the T3 and the T3i, which Canon is still actively selling. Uh, you also have their SL1, which is their teeny tiny compact camera. And then you have the T5i, which is, I guess, the top of their low-end compact cameras. Uh, these cameras all have about the same image quality, which is not great image quality for a DSLR. It's about as bad as you can get with a modern DSLR, um, but it's still plenty good for many uses. And in fact, I am constantly recommending either the Canon T3 or the T3i to people as their first cameras because they can do all the same things as the big boys, pretty much everything you need, and the image quality is good enough for just about everybody. And you know what? You can pick those things up used for $350 for the T3 and maybe $450, $500 for the T3i. They're fantastic cameras. And if you're looking for your first camera, start there. Even if you have a budget of $2,000, I'd rather see you spend $500 on a T3i and saved $1,500 for lenses and such. Uh, but if you want more advice about that, uh, go check out the buying guide at sdpcommunity.com. I'm selling it now, um, so soon you'll be able to get it on Amazon and everywhere else. But for the for a very limited time at sdpcommunity.com, it's on sale cheaper. So just go to the store there and check it out. Um, it's 200 pages now. There's a ton of info in there about bodies, lenses, flashes, tripods, even how to build a computer that's good for video editing, so check it out. Now, a step above those low-end compact cameras are the high-end compact cameras, and that's always been the Canon 60D and the 7D. Now, the new 70D comes in, and I feel it basically completely displaces the old 7. It has exactly the same image quality as the 7, uh, but it also has the same image quality as the 60D because those all always had pretty much the same image quality. However, it improves upon the 60D by taking over the 7's autofocus capabilities when you're taking still pictures. And the 7 always had amazing autofocus capabilities, and that's why the 7 had for years been my recommendation to Canon photographers for a wildlife and sports camera. It had that compact sensor, which is great for wildlife and sports because it makes your telephoto zooms more powerful. And it had this amazing autofocus system that the 60D lacked. Well, Canon took that amazing autofocus system and stuck it in the 70D, which technically is positioned below the 7. <laughs> but in my opinion, it's, it's better than the 7 in almost every way. And in fact, it tends to cost more than the 7. Uh, you can get a used 7 now for about $700, $750, sometimes less. I see them going for 500, 600 bucks. And that's an amazing buy. I would never recommend somebody buy a Canon 7 new. Definitely get them used if you're gonna get them because there are so many great used models on the market and they can save you so much money. Um, however, the 70D body alone is now gonna cost you 1200 bucks. <laughs> so you can almost buy two sevens for the price of a single 70D. 
So there's a real debate here whether you should go for the 7 at, say, 700 bucks or the 70D for $1,200, and the answer is not going to be the same for everybody. First, if you're looking for a good all-around camera, if you want to do video, if you want to take pictures of your kids and go out and about and take pictures at, at parties and at dinners, the, the 70D is clearly the better camera than the 7. It's just a more modern camera. The touchscreen is awesome and useful. Wi-Fi is sometimes useful. I'll get into that more later. Um, but overall, it's just a better camera. I like the, the feel of the buttons. And like I said, the image quality and focusing system are the same as the 7. However, if you are primarily a wildlife and sports photographer and you don't care about video, if you're just shooting wildlife or sports stills, I would totally recommend going out and buying a used 7 and forgetting the 70D. So the 7 is my buy for wildlife and sports photographers and I feel like overall the 70D is going to be my buy for just about everybody else. Now if you have a 60D and you're wondering if you should upgrade, um, maybe so. The image quality isn't any better, so your pictures aren't going to turn out any better, but the focusing system is so much faster. If you have a 60, D and you're struggling with the focusing system, then the 70D would be a big upgrade. And just generally the ergonomics are really nice, the touch screen is really nice, and the Wi-Fi, these are all features that you'll really appreciate. Uh, the 60D is selling used for about 600 bucks now, so if you go and unload yours, that's about what you can get, and then the upgrade to the 70D would only cost you about another 600. Now above all these compact cameras with their APS-C size sensors, a smaller size sensor that doesn't fill the entire frame of a full frame lens, we have Canon's full frame 35mm cameras, the Canon 6, the 5D Mark III, the old 5D Mark II, which I still think is a great value used, and of course the top end 1DX. That 1DX is running you like 6700 bucks. <laughs> the 5D Mark III, the second from the top is about $3,200, $3,300, and the 6D is going for, uh, let's see, $1,900 new. Now, the 5D Mark II isn't manufactured anymore, but you can pick them up used for anywhere from uh, $1,100 to $1,200, sometimes better. Now, these cameras all have something in common, and that is amazing image quality. The image quality on these full-frame cameras is astounding. It's much better than you'll see at any of the compact cameras. So if you want the best image quality, you have to go for one of these cameras. And I'm talking about the 5D Mark II so much because the used prices are the same as they are for the 70D. So if you're looking at the 70D and image quality is paramount to you, then don't get the 70D. Go on eBay or wherever you buy used stuff and check out 5D Mark IIs. Those things are tanks. They will last forever and they provide an image quality that no compact camera will ever be able to match, at, at least in my wild <laughs> estimations. Uh, time might prove me wrong there, but right now the image quality on the 5D Mark II is far better. It doesn't have touchscreen or Wi-Fi, it can't focus in video, um, but if you want still image quality, for example, landscapes and such, it's much better. Um, the autofocus system on the Mark II also is not as strong as the 70D or the 7. But if you're taking portraits and general photography, the autofocus system is just fine. Again, it's not going to be your choice for wildlife or sports, but for everything else, it's a serious consideration. If you're not into used cameras, you might be weighing the 70D versus the 6. And the 6 is an amazing camera. The 6 is a full frame camera, so again, that means it has far better image quality than the 70D or any of the compact cameras. It also has that Wi-Fi that you get in the 70D and it adds a built-in GPS, which I really like because I love to travel and I'm out there doing landscapes and such and when you turn that GPS on, it'll record where you are in the metadata of each picture. So if you get some awesome picture of a beautiful landscape or some animal in the wild and you want to return to that spot, you can look it up on a map and see exactly where you are. And it's also just useful for travels because you don't look at a picture and wonder, where the heck did I take this? If you load them into Lightroom with the GPS data, you can pull up the map view and actually browse your pictures by location. Now, you can connect the 70D to a GPS, but you have to buy this like $150, $200 external thing and it's a pain to attach and you know you're going to forget it when you're out traveling. So anyway, I like the GPS in the 6 and the image quality is far better. 
the autofocus system in the 6 is not as strong as the 70D, so it's not as good for action and sports. And also the full frame sensor doesn't give you that extra crop factor that you get on the 7 or the 70D or any of the other compact cameras. So for that reason, if you're into wildlife and sports, I won't push you to the 6. But if you're into general photography and portraits, the 6 is a definite uh, buy. It's something definitely to look at because it's only a couple of hundred dollars more than this compact camera, but you get that beautiful full frame sensor. Another thing that full frame sensor gives you is shorter depth of field. That can be a plus or a minus. If you're doing landscapes, you want everything to be in focus and that can be a real challenge to get everything in focus. And if you're a beginner photographer, sometimes focusing is a problem too. But once you get to be more advanced, you actually start to want a very short depth of field so that you can isolate your subject and blur the background. These are things that I cover in chapter four of Stunning Digital Photography, uh, my number one selling photography book. The full frame sensors give you 60% shorter depth of field than you get on the compact sensors. And that can be incredibly useful. In other words, if you have that 70 to 200 f2.8 lens that so many of us portrait photographers love, if you put it on a compact camera like the 70D, it's not f2.8 anymore. It's basically f4.5, at least as far as your depth of field is concerned. So you're not getting that short depth of field that you paid for. So for that reason, portrait photographers and more advanced photographers who like to be able to blur the background, definitely check out one of the full frame cameras. The 6, if you want the fancy Wi-Fi and GPS and those other features. Otherwise, get the 5D Mark II used. So let's talk about what makes the 70D interesting. Uh, you know, a lot of it isn't new at all. Like the autofocus system is exactly the same as the 7. So I feel completely comfortable using that 70D because there was nothing new about it. And the image quality, nothing new at all. Exactly the same as the 60D and the 7D. So if you're hoping to see improvements in those things when you buy the camera, you're not. You could just go get one of the three, four, five-year-old cameras and have the exact same experience. But it does have several improvements to the usability and those can help you take better pictures. I think the most exciting one is the dual pixel autofocus system. This is an autofocus system that allows for fast and continuous autofocusing when that mirror is flipped up and DSLR cameras flip up that mirror anytime you're using the live view screen or if you're recording video. So this means that you can finally record moving subjects in your video. So many people heard about the great video in DSLRs and rushed out and bought one for video. I have friends who did that and you know what? They end up disappointed because they go to film their kid's soccer game or their baseball game and everything's out of focus because the focusing system is terrible. So uh, my cameraman Justin and I spent days working with the autofocus system and then just testing it. But then after then, since then, we've been uh, using it to produce our videos and our DVD series. And I have to say, it's just astounding. It's changed the way we film. Um, so let's look at a couple of quick segments showing off what the Canon 70D can do with that new autofocus system. First, for like shooting my daughter's soccer games and for other sports, it worked pretty well. It worked, you know, like every camcorder that you've ever had, except that you could put a really nice lens on it. You receive the 70D's dual pixel AF. Does a really good job of tracking the car, even though the car is in the shade and it's black. These are things that make it a little more difficult. It's not a perfect job of keeping up, but it does a pretty good job. The 70D nicely focused on my face automatically because it's got this fantastic camera or face tracking. So I'm gonna have my camera adjusted now. Just touch the camera on the touch screen display. And as you can see, it instantly focuses on the camera. Uh, now I'll go ahead and switch back to my face. <laughs> How amazing is that? Focus on a book behind me. There you go, it just switches automatically. And uh, tell you what, focus back on the camera and watch this, it will automatically track the camera. Even though it's not a face, it will track it as it moves around. So it seems to be able to track faces or things that aren't faces. So I think we're gonna get much, much better results out of the 70D for this. As I move closer and closer to it, it should give you a really nice background blur, but keep me mostly in focus. 
Another cool feature in this camera is the Wi-Fi, and this is certainly not the first Canon camera to have Wi-Fi, and there are lots of cameras from other manufacturers that have Wi-Fi, but I did spend quite a bit of time working with it because I used it just as my daily camera, and I'd be out taking pictures of my kid's soccer game, and I'd be like, I wanna go ahead and post this to Facebook so everybody can see it right away. And let me tell you what, that Wi-Fi is frustrating. <laughs> like, it makes me mad as an engineer that somebody would release this. Oh my God, I can't even believe what a pain it is to get a picture from your camera to Facebook. The 70D gives you two different ways to do that. They have this uh, Canon image gateway service that will allow you to theoretically post a picture directly from your camera to Facebook. It took me an hour and a half to get that set up the first time. Also, I never got it to connect to either of my three home Wi-Fi networks, each with different routers and different security settings. I just continued to get errors, random, meaningless errors. Sometimes it would tell me the uh, it didn't get an IP address, which is definitely BS, because everything else connects to it and get it gets an IP address, or it would tell me the security code was wrong when it definitely wasn't wrong. Anyway, it was just infuriating. The only Wi-Fi network I actually got it to connect to was my iPhone's uh, tethering hotspot. Um, which is a service you have to pay extra for, it costs like 30 extra bucks. And, but that's okay, because I can use that hotspot to connect my camera to the internet when I'm out and I'm away from home, which is really when you would want to be using the service anyway, right? Oh, uh, another thing about using Wi-Fi with that EOS Remote app, it won't let you upload your full-size original picture. It always scales it down for you. So it's fine if you just want to throw something on Facebook because they're still plenty big. They're like almost 2,000 pixels across, but it's still scaling it down by like four times. So you're not going to be able to use it for a backup or anything professional. It's clearly just for getting pictures up online somewhere quickly to share, but that it's still useful. I'm complaining a lot about Wi-Fi because it really is infuriating to use, but it's better than not having it. I still like that it has it, and I think I'll use it once in a while. Another improvement over the 60D and the 7 is the addition of this touchscreen, and it's an articulating screen to boot, so you can flip it out and rotate it around. I love the touchscreen. I mean, I love it and I hate it. Again, Canon isn't good at operating systems and their user interface is appalling. So sometimes you touch something and you think it's gonna actually go to the option that you selected and it just like highlights it. And then you have to go push a different part of the screen or push the button on the camera itself to select it. That's because they didn't design a touchscreen operating system for the camera. They designed a, the old operating system that they've always had using buttons and cursors and stuff. Uh, and then they've just like added touch to it as in hindsight and it's not great. But it's still better than not having a touch screen. And where I find it really useful is when I'm reviewing pictures because whether it's portraits or wildlife, one of the first things you wanna do is just check to see your focus. And I can just pull it apart like that when I'm reviewing a picture and zoom all the way in and then I can just pan around just like you could on a reasonable uh, touchscreen interface and that allows me to review my pictures very quickly. It also gives me quick access to things like rating the, the pictures from one to five stars and after a while you do kind of get used to it. There are things missing like in the menus you'd think you could just grab and uh, drag to scroll like you do on iPhones and Androids and anything else but you can't. You have to push the little up and down arrows on the scroll bar. So there's like antiquated things like that. That, that make you a little irritated using it. But like I said, better than nothing. And right now it's the highest end Canon camera that has that useful functionality. So I still see it as a plus. Uh, you can also get like an SLI or a T5i and they have that same touchscreen interface for uh, lower amounts. Um, but for me, I'm looking for as many capabilities as possible and the 70D adds that. And frankly, I can't wait for the higher end cameras like the 5D Mark IV maybe to have uh, Wi-Fi and a touchscreen in it. That'll be a nice addition, especially that dual pixel AF. Okay, one other minor thing that I really like about the 70D is that it has this little level when you look through the viewfinder. I, I haven't used another camera that has this, so maybe it's common elsewhere. Um, I know in the Mark III, it'll use like the focusing points to show you whether the camera is level or not, but this is clearly a better implementation of it. And I found it useful for every type of photography that I was doing. You know, you, there's not always landmarks that you can use to level your picture, but it does make a difference. So anyway, 
I like that Canon. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't wait to see it in the higher end cameras. So those are the most important points about the new Canon 70D, but you can't just make one review because people do different types of photography and you only really care about one or two types of photography usually. So let's go down the list of types of photography, video landscapes, portraits, wildlife, sports, uh, anything else that you might do. I'll start with video. The Canon 70D is awesome for video because of this dual pixel AF that I showed off earlier. If you're doing any kind of real video where people are moving, <laughs> including just your kids' sports games or whatever, it's awesome. And you could finally use your big telephoto lenses and get awesome video sports. I've been spending a lot of time doing that and it really works great. It's not foolproof. It'll get tricked when some defensive player runs through the frame, it'll focus on their back. Um, but it's still better than we can do with any of the other Canon DSLRs, so it's great that way. Um, I mentioned earlier, it lacks a headphone jack, it lacks clean HDMI out. I also say, because it's a small APS-C size sensor, you don't get the short depth of field that you do on the big Canons, and that's okay for sports, but if you're doing professional video and you really wanna blow out that background, you're gonna be wishing you had that dual pixel AF with a full frame sensor. You don't have that option right now. We'll have to wait for the 5D Mark IV or the 6D Mark II or some other new camera to finally get that with a full frame sensor. For those of you who don't have a particular type of photography, if you just want one camera to take family pictures and travel pictures, I highly recommend the 70D. It seems to bring together the best of all the different Canon cameras. The compact sensor is kind of a bonus here for the casual users because you can use the less expensive EF-S Canon lenses and they're lighter weight and they're smaller. Uh, so I, I think this is the ultimate Canon camera if you don't mind the $1,200 price tag without a body, without a lens rather. I think it's the ultimate of the Canon cameras for just the casual user and general photography use. Another common request is people want to do low light work. Sometimes they're at concerts or, you know, maybe their kids' sporting events happen in a dimly lit gym. This is really common and the 70D is not going to be great for that. No compact camera is going to be great for the low light work. You really want to jump up to the full frame camera. Now some people are going to be happy with the compact sensor quality when they're shooting in low light, when you have to get up into ISOs like 3200, 6400, 12,800. But I get so many people complaining to me. They're like, I just bought this expensive camera and my pictures, what's with all the blue and green and red speckles in it? Why does it look so awful? What am I doing wrong? And you're not doing anything wrong. That's just what high ISO pictures look like on compact cameras. And they're not great on full frame cameras either, but they're much better. So if you're doing a lot of that low light work, you're gonna to wanna to look at either a used 5D Mark II, a Canon 6, or the 5D Mark III. And check out my other Ultimate review where I cover the differences between those cameras in more detail. You can check out my YouTube channel to find it. Speaking of low light work, what about night photography? Well, good news, the 70D is awesome for night photography. I, you know, your camera's on a tripod when you're doing night photography. And often the tripod is like up high or down low and I, I find the articulating display really useful for that. I can flip it out and tilt it up at me if the camera is down low or if I have it cranked up over my head or something, I can tilt it down at me. It's also nice and bright. That's something it shares with the 5D Mark III and the 6D. It'll basically like amplify the light so you almost have like superhuman night vision. The 7 doesn't have that and the 5D Mark II don't have that. So for night photography, it's excellent. Of course, you wanna keep that ISO down. You wanna be shooting at ISO 100. You're gonna be using long shutter speeds, but you should be doing that anyway. So check out chapter 10 of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, for detailed information about tripods and night photography and everything else. So let's talk about the 70D for a portrait camera. Well, if you're doing studio portraits, it's honestly, it's probably overkill. <laughs> If you're doing studio portraits where you are completely controlling the background and you have plenty of light so you can shoot at ISO 100, I would just get the Canon T3. You can pick up a used body for like 350 bucks and that will save you, what, $900? You should spend that $900 on lights and lenses and backdrops, software, <laughs> Photoshop maybe. Those are gonna make a much bigger difference to your portrait photography work than upgrading to the 70D would. Um, 
It has a lot of nice to haves though for studio work if you do get it. Again, that touch screen lets you make sure that your uh, pictures are nice and sharp. And I like the ability to um, rate the pictures from the touch screen, that's nice too. Um, the Wi-Fi feature is nice sometimes in the studio because you can hook it up to an iPhone or an iPad and then hand that to an art director. And as you're taking the pictures, they can be reviewing them in real time and they can make suggestions to you. They can uh, warn you that, I don't know, the collar is messed up or the hair is falling in front of the face or, or just give you some general direction without you having to pull the camera off the tripod and show the back of the camera to somebody. So I really like the wireless tethering that you can get with the Wi-Fi feature in the 7D. Um, but most portrait photographers don't use that anyway, and honestly, I, I very rarely use it. So portrait photography, the 7D is fine, but you can also get away with getting a base end camera. Now, if your portrait photography is a little more serious or if you're just out of the studio and you don't have complete control over the background, you might wanna blur the background. That's a really common thing for portrait photographers. We like to isolate our subject by blowing the background out of focus with a short depth of field. And the 70D can do that with the right lenses, but you'd get 60% more background blur out of a full frame camera. So if you're not in the studio, if you're out and about, you might just consider that. Now you can still get decent background blur. I recommend either the uh, 85 millimeter F1.8 lens or at, at a low end, the uh, Tamron 70 to 200 F2.8. The 85 millimeter is about like 350 bucks and the Tamron 70 to 200 is about 760, $770. That's about as cheap as you're gonna get for a real portrait lens. On a full frame camera, those would give, give you much better background blur. And the 5D Mark II used is the same price <laughs> as the 70D. So for me, if I were a portrait photographer in or out of the studio, I'd probably go for a used 5D Mark II if I wanted to be able to get that background blur. Same price, better picture quality. So now let's talk about sports. If you're doing mixed video and stills, the 70D is the choice clear and away. If you're shooting just stills though, I'm gonna push you to a used 7D. That'll save you 450 bucks or so, and that's 450 bucks that you can put into a good lens, and that's gonna make a difference in your pictures, whereas getting the 70D instead of the 7D won't really make any difference in your still sports photos. And I'm gonna make the same recommendation for wildlife. A used 7D is simply a better value. It also offers nine frames a second instead of eight frames a second. It's a minor jump, um, but more importantly, the seven has a bigger buffer. I find with fast cards that the seven will start buffering after like 23 shots. The 70D buffers anywhere from like 13 to 20 shots, depending on how much complexity there is in an image. It seems like low ISO, nice clean images, uh, give me a full like 20 pictures before I buffer. But out in the real world, I've been having it stop after like 15, 16 pictures. So that's two seconds of shooting. And as you're trying to get that bird that's coming at you or that deer that's running, sometimes you need more than two seconds to get all the pictures that you want. So the 70D is good for wildlife and sports, but that short buffer can be really frustrating. Um, Generally, the seven, a used one, is gonna be a better value to, to you if you don't need the video. So let's talk about landscapes. To a landscape photographer, the priorities are detail and dynamic range. You wanna be able to make really large prints if you're a landscape photographer and a perfectionist. Now, if you're a casual landscape photographer and you just want travel pictures to put on Facebook or whatever, a Canon T3, 300, 350 bucks used is gonna do just fine. The image quality will be just fine. But if you're looking to go pro, if you're serious about it, if you wanna make huge, huge poster size prints, the 70D is fine. But again, it's hard for me to recommend it over a used 5D Mark II at exactly the same price point. The 5D Mark II will give you much better image quality, greater dynamic range. Uh, it'll show you more details in the shadows and allow you to recover more of the highlights and it's the same price. So for serious landscape photographers, I'm gonna tell you to pass on the 70D and instead pick yourself up a full frame used 5D Mark II in good condition. How about one of the most demanding types of photography, weddings? 
Weddings have a lot of the same factors as portrait photography. You want to be able to blur the background really nicely. And I already said the 70D can do that, but you're going to have a much better effect with a full frame camera. And that 5D Mark II is at exactly the same price point. <laughs> but weddings are demanding in other ways too. You need to be able to shoot in low light because receptions are often shot indoors at night using just the artificial lights. And there's action too, because <laughs> people are moving and people are dancing. Uh, they're walking down aisles, sometimes they're running, kids are playing. You have to be able to catch all of this. So your low light capabilities are important, your image quality is critical, and your autofocus system is really, really important. Now, the 70D has a strong autofocus system, but as the lights get low and the ISO starts to go up, you're gonna notice real problems in the image quality. There's gonna be a ton, a ton of noise and people, clients are gonna complain. Uh, so for that reason, for the low light part of weddings, I really think you want to go with a full frame camera if you're serious about it at all. If you're just shooting one wedding, you know, it'll be fine. It won't be great, but it'll be fine for the bride and groom's Facebook. If you're serious, if people are paying you, you want to go up to a full frame camera. Um, the 6 is pretty good as a wedding photography camera, especially in low light. That center focus point works really well. I use 5D Mark II, not quite as good. The image quality is the same but the focusing just isn't quite as strong in the 5D Mark II. Um, the ultimate wedding camera is either a 5D Mark III with amazing autofocus and beautiful low light capabilities or that high-end 1DX. Um, 5D Mark III, $3,300. The 1DX, like $6,700. So let your budget decide. You know, If you're a pro, then it's all about how much money you can make. I think very few working pros can uh, justify that 1DX. Uh, the 5D Mark III, I think, it's the wedding photography camera that I generally recommend for those who can afford it. If your budget gets lower, look at the 6D or the 5D Mark II uh, or a used 7D. But honestly, I, I don't think I'd recommend the 70D for wedding photographers. It does a workable job if you want it for other reasons, but if that's your sole purpose, not the camera I'd recommend. So to wrap it up, I love the 70D. I love it so much that I'm getting rid of my seven here. I only have room for one or the other. And you know, I'm an avid wildlife and sports photographer, but I, I don't wanna keep both. They're a little expensive. And there are so many things that I love about the 70D. Most importantly, that video capability that I'm using right now, because I'm recording with shallow depth of field and it's tracking my face. And I, I know it's doing a great job. I trust it. And for that reason, I'm keeping the 70D and I'm selling this seven. It's gonna go on eBay in a couple of days. Uh, I will miss that extra frame per second and I will miss the longer buffer when I'm shooting wildlife, but there's just too many great things to love about the 70D. And if you get it, I think you will find that you love those things too. It's Canon's best all around camera for the casual user. For the professional user, kind of depends what you're doing. It's really only the ideal camera for the professional videographers who need a B-roll camera. But for those of us who do all around different types of shooting, it's a really awesome choice. If you do decide to get it, please use the links in the description below because I'll get a few pennies out of every dollar you spend and that helps to support me because I don't get this gear free. I have to buy it all out of pocket and I only review gear that I actually use. So I promise if I make any money, I will immediately spend it on more camera gear to review, so I appreciate your support. Also check out my camera gear buying guide, Tony Northrop's photography buying guide. It's available at sdpcommunity.com. Right now, for a low, low price, it's 200 pages of excruciatingly detailed information about camera bodies, including mirrorless and point and shoot cameras, but of course, a ton of information on DSLRs. Uh, their lenses, I'll decode all those crazy codes that are in the lenses for you and I'll tell you what you need and what you don't need. It can save you thousands of dollars. It really can. And it's pretty cheap right now. Uh, right now I'm selling it for $4.99, but that price is going to go up. Just like my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which teaches photography techniques, this book will last forever. It will never go out of date because I'm going to keep it updated as new camera gear comes out, as technologies change, as techniques change, as people tell me that I'm wrong and make a good point about it, I will update that book for as long as I'm alive. And I'm pretty young still, I got a few years left in me, so for that five bucks you will get a lifetime reference. 
uh, that you can keep with you and access either online from your PC or copy it to your smartphone or tablet or any other type of mobile device. So please do check it out and I appreciate your support. Also, I'd appreciate it if you clicked like down below and subscribe to see future videos and reviews. Thanks so much.